Hello, this is Ed May with Building Type, and this video is going to be a detailed walkthrough of the downloading and installation of the Ladybug to PHPP toolkit from the Passive House Tools website. So, um, Hopefully you have already taken a look at the Passive House Tools website, but if not, that's going to be probably the main place to uh, get answers to any questions you have about the downloading and setup of the Ladybug Tools to PHPP uh, uh, toolkit here. And so you can just go to PassiveHouseTools.com, as you see on the screen here. And um, what we're going to do in this video is just walk through, as I said, the download, configuration, and installation of these tools. Um, so I guess right off the bat, one thing to say is that there is actually a couple of different places that you can get your hands on the various tools that are part of the Passive House Tools uh, project. Um, you can certainly download the official release versions here from the Passive House Tools website or from Food for Rhino, um, if it's a, you know, for, for Rhino tools. Um, that, that's totally fine, um, and uh, that's mainly what we will look at in this video. Uh, I just wanted to note, though, that there, are, there are, if you're interested, you can always get your hands on the most up-to-date, the most current version of all of the tools by just going to the GitHub repository. Um, if, um, you know, if you're new to the tools, maybe download the, the stable release first and get familiar with that. And, and, but um, if you do want to keep up with the most recent, most up-to-date versions, um, those you can always download from the GitHub repository. You can access that here from the website by just going to this, uh, this link here. And um, all of the tools, all of the source code, and, and all of the files, the most up-to-date files, are going to be available here on the Passfiles Tools uh, GitHub repository. So just to say that right out of the gate. But... Um, we're going to look at the LBT to PH, the Ladybug Tools to PHPP um, uh, toolkit here and look at how we can uh, get our hands on all the files and download all those files. So the easiest way to do that, um, again, if you don't want to mess around with the GitHub stuff and you don't need that most current version of everything, you just want the last stable release, that's totally fine. So you just come here to PassiveHouseTools.com and you go over to the LBT to PH section and in the LBT to PH section, as you can see when you scroll down, there's a whole bunch of content here around... Um, you know, a bunch of links to ways to learn more. You know, if you want to uh, learn more about how to use the to the um, tool, you can take a look at the YouTube uh, playlist, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but mainly, what I want to walk through in this video is this download and installation section here. So let's just work through this one piece at a time, and we'll sort of look at exactly how to configure and sort of um, set up your your system so that it works with all of these tools. So, of course, um, all of the Passive House tools are all free, um, you know, uh, goes without saying they are uh, part of the, or, um, you know, they piggyback on top of the Ladybug tools uh, toolkit, which is all, which is all free and uh, make use of the Energy Plus as well, which is all free. So all, all of the tools here are free. However, you will need to have some, um, some other software on your computer in order for these tools to work. So, um, first of all, um, these tools have only been tested on the Windows side. Um, that's not to say that they can't work on the Mac side, but right now they only work on the Windows side. So just keep that in mind, especially when it comes to the Excel support, um, you know, writing out to Excel. We don't have any Mac uh, version of that right now, so you're going to have to use a Windows OS of some form. Now, I work on a Mac, but I'm here on Parallels, using Parallels, and, and uh, that is working just fine. Um, so certainly you can run it on a Mac, you just have to have a Windows OS um, installed. You will need Rhino 6 or 7. Um, I, I use 7 primarily for our work, and so uh, it has been tested and, and does work with Rhino 6 and 7. Um, and you'll need the Ladybug Tools Toolkit uh, version 1 or better. Um, so note right out of the gate that these components are all built to work with the quote-unquote new version of the Ladybug Tools, the, the version which was released in fall of 2020. Um, they do not work with the so-called legacy Ladybug Tools, the uh, uh, pre-October 2020 version of those Ladybug Tools. So these tools do require that you have the new version of the Ladybug Tools. They are only going to support those new Ladybug Tools, or this, this package will only support those new Ladybug Tools going forward. So um, make sure that you download those. That, of course, all free um, as well. You can get that from the Ladybug Tools website or from Food for Rhino, as you please. You, of course, in order to use Ladybug Tools, you'll need a valid copy or version of Energy Plus and Open Studio. Those, of course, are also all free. Um, 
make sure that you download the right version of those. I will just point you to, if you click through the link here, I'll just point you to this um, compatibility matrix, which was created by the Ladybug Tools folks to show which version of Ladybug Tools is compatible with which version of things like Radiance and Open Studio, et cetera, et cetera. So make sure you install the right versions there. That's all basic Ladybug Tools stuff. If you have questions about that, go to Ladybug Tools forum, um, but you'll need that in order to make everything there work. Now, once you have all of that up and running, once everything is configured and you have Rhino and you have Grasshopper and you have Windows and you have Ladybug tools, etc., you'll also need a copy of the PHPP, the Passive House Planning Package. I want to state very clearly that the Ladybug to PH tool does not replace the PHPP. It's uh, not at all a replacement for the PHPP. It is merely an exporter to the PHPP. And so you will have to have the PHPP on your computer somewhere in order for this exporter to work properly. Currently, the uh, this version of um, Ladybug 2 PH Tools um, uh, works with version 9.6 or 9.7, uh, 9.6 in metric or 9.7 in uh, IP uh, units, uh, uh, American units. Um, Note that it does currently only work with the English language version of the PHPP. We're working on multilingual support, but um, uh, at the time of this recording in March of 2021, uh, this uh, only works with the English language version of the PHPP. But it will work with either the metric or the IP version. Um, uh, that is just fine. And then lastly, in order to um, use the PHPP, you'll have to have a, a working copy of Microsoft Excel. Um, and for, for this um, exporter to work properly, it needs to be Microsoft Excel 2015 or later. So you will need to have all of those pieces installed on your computer in order for any of this plugin to work properly. So once you have all of that, and hopefully that's pretty straightforward, um, but once you have all of that, the next piece is to download and install the Rhino tools for this plugin. Then we'll download and install the Grasshopper tools for this plugin. So we've got two different sort of pieces, two different components that we need to um, that we need to install, and we'll look at we'll look at those in turn. So first of all, if you click on download and install Rhino tools, you can see here that we've got a couple of different download links depending on which version of Rhino that you are running. Um, as I said, currently. Um, uh, this toolkit works in Rhino 6 and Rhino 7. I would recommend using Rhino 7. I think it's going to work um, a, a little bit cleaner, be easier to uh, uh, manage, but um, we do have a, um, a, a legacy link here to the Rhino 6 version of all the tools. But we're gonna, I'm going to show the Rhino 7 version of the tools, and to download them is quite straightforward. Just click on the button there. It'll go off and download, and you'll see you'll get a zip file here in your downloads. Now, what are we going to do with that? Well, let's just read through here. So in order to use these new Rhino tools, what we need to do is take a bunch of this stuff that we just downloaded and put it into our Rhino folder. Now, I don't know where you installed Rhino, but I know that the default installation is in users, your, your username, in a folder called App Data, Roaming, McNeil, Rhino, Rhino, Rhinoceros, and then the version number, uh, and then in plugins and Python plugins. Whew, that's a lot. Well, it's pretty easy to find though. So let me just go and I'll open up my finder here and we'll open up a finder window. There we go. And so I'm just going to go to, again, I'm on, whoops, I'm on, um, aye, aye, aye. this video recording thing really slows down my computer. I am on a, I'm running on Parallels, so my files are a little more complicated than most, but um, it's pretty straightforward. Just go to your C drive and go to users. And in users, we will go to whatever your whatever your username is that you have installed Rhino in. And then go to app data. Notice that app data is a hidden folder, so you might need to unhide this folder depending on your view settings, depending on you know how you've configured your, your uh, finder in Windows. Just go to app data and then roaming and then McNeil and then Rhinoceros, and then again, I'm using version 7. If you're using version 6, you would use 6. I'm using 7. And in version 7, make this a little bigger. Notice here, in version 7, we have a bunch of different folders. One of them is called Plugins. So you're going to go to the Plugins folder. And inside of the Plugins folder, you'll see all sorts of gnarly folders here with really ugly folder names. Yours might look a little bit different. Depends on what plugins you have on your system. But all, but almost everybody, um, hopefully everybody, has a folder called Python Plugins. If you don't have that folder, it's very simple. Just right-click and make a new folder and call it Python Plugins, all one word. 
So if you don't have this folder, just go ahead and create it, but you probably already have it. And if you go into that folder, Notice here that I already have a, a, a copy of that PH tools. So where did that come from? Well, that's what we just downloaded. So if we go, to, go here and we say show in our folder, and let's just open up that zip file. So that was the zip file that we downloaded off the internet called LBT to PH Rhino 7. And if I double click that, it'll open up. And notice I've got a couple different folders in here. Don't worry about the Mac OS thing. As I said, uh, mostly we work on Mac, um, but that's just like icons or whatever. The folder that you want is this one here called PH Tools with this big stupid name. And all you need to do in order to make this work is just copy this folder over into your Python plugins. So you're just going to copy, just drag and copy this over into your Python plugins. Now I already I already have this here, um, so it's saying, "Oh, what do you want me to do?" Um, I'm just going to I'm just going to x out of that and ignore that because um, we don't want to I don't want to overwrite that now. Um, we could if we wanted to. Inside there, though, there's you can take a look. There's just a bunch of folders in here. There's a bunch of um, uh, com what are called commands in Rhino parlance. So there's a bunch of commands in there. But once those are in there, once those are in your Python plugins folder, you should be good to go. So that part is done. We can close that now. And so that's so that's that. Uh, again, I'm not sure exactly where you have Rhino installed, so you might need to hunt around and find this folder. But um, you'll certainly have it wherever you installed uh, Rhino. Uh, now, the next thing that you probably want to do is set up a custom toolbar in Rhino. You do not have to do this. All of those commands are now available to you. If you prefer to just type in the name of the command in the command line in Rhino, you can certainly use them that way. But um, we've set up a, a toolbar here so that you can have easy access to those tools. And it's relatively straightforward to um, set up that toolbar. As you see here in the files that we downloaded, we downloaded this um, big ugly name and we downloaded something with this extension .rui, that's a, a Rhino uh, toolbar uh, file, uh, basically. And to import that Rhino toolbar is fairly straightforward. If we'll go over here and I'll just um, open up an instance of Rhino. And in Rhino, it's pretty simple to do that. So you can see I'm running Rhino 7. And if we go to File, and we go to Properties, And inside our document properties, so we went file properties, inside document properties, we come down here to our toolbars, and from our toolbars up at the top here, we can just go file and import toolbars. And from this import toolbars, all you need to do is just navigate to wherever this file was that you downloaded there. So you can either copy this and put it on your desktop, or you can just navigate to your downloads folder. However, you know, you just want to point this at that, uh, at that toolbar. And all you need to do is just hit open, hit OK, uh, and then you should, at that point, have a new toolbar in your Rhino scene with a bunch of new tools. Again, you can access any of these tools by you know, typing into the command line here with the PHPP prefix, and that'll, uh, that'll give you access to all of the various new commands here. But you can also access those commands from this toolbar. Oops. So this toolbar is set up just to give you easy or quicker access to those elements. So hopefully that all makes sense. So we are all set now, setting up our Rhino side. So our Rhino side is basically ready to go. Um, oh, one last thing that you might want to do just to um, ensure that it all works properly. I'm not sure that you still need to do this in Rhino 7, but you, I think you did in Rhino 6. What you might want to do is add this text right here to File Properties um, General Command List. Now, what does that mean? Well, if we go here again, and I go to File, and I go back to Properties, so there's my properties dialog, and we want to go to file properties general and the list of commands. So here we want to go to general, and in this notice here in the middle we have this command list, and we have this option run these commands every time that Rhino starts. And notice that I just pasted in underscore no echo. Don't, you don't really need that, but I think well maybe you do. Underscore hyphen run Python script space underscore enter. That's just if you're not familiar with that whole syntax, that's just um, running a command in Rhino every time that Rhino boots up. And I, again, I don't think that's necessary in Rhino 7 anymore. It was necessary in Rhino 6, I believe. Um, to be safe, why don't you just go ahead and drop it in there? And what that'll do is just expose all of those, um, all of those new commands without, um, without any headaches. Um, uh, so I believe, I believe we do want to do that, but um, 
it doesn't hurt anything, so just go ahead and, and drop it in. If you want more information on any Rhino commands or creating and deploying these plugins, anything like that, a couple links here to the various Rhino pages that'll explain a little bit more in detail sort of how all of that stuff that we were just looking at was put together in terms of the folder names and you know configurations and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so there. So there's our Rhino side. Let me minimize this. So our Rhino side now is basically done. And now we can turn our attention to the Grasshopper side. And the Grasshopper side is pretty straightforward. There's just two things that we need to do there. So again, we have a download link here. So I'm just going to click on this download button and I will download the uh, another zip file. And this zip file is going to have a bunch of uh, Grasshopper user objects as well as some custom scripts in it. So once that's finished downloading, it should only take a second, it's very small, um, in my downloads folder here. So here's my Rhino side tools, my LBT to PH Rhino 7 tools, and here's my LBT to PH Grasshopper tools. Again, all I need to do is just double click those in order to open up the, the folder there. And notice we've got two folders here, some GH user, or one called GH user and one called scripts. So we've got two folders with a bunch of files that we need to place in the right places in our system. So the first one there, the GH user, that's going to be pretty easy. So the easiest way to install all of these GH user objects, and if we look in there, notice we're just going to get a big list of all these Grasshopper GH user, Grasshopper user, these are custom user um, components. The easiest way to install those is to just go and, whoops, um, is to just boot up Grasshopper, so I'll just boot up an instance of Grasshopper, and let me minimize this or pull this over to the side. The easiest way to install these files in Grasshopper is to go to File, go to Special Folders, User Objects Folder. So again, File, Special Folders, and I want to open up the User Objects Folder. Now we can of course just navigate there in our in our Finder, but we can also easily access it there. Uh, let me close some of these, close some of these, close some of these. We can easily access it or navigate there by just using that link inside of Grasshopper. Oops, I shouldn't have closed that other one. Sorry about that. Uh, let's do this. I will just open this. There we go. All right. So what are we going to do here? Well, it's very straightforward. All we have to do is take these GH user objects. And we just need to select them all and just drag them into our user objects scene. So we just need to drag them from here over into our user objects scene. And it's as easy as that. Now I'm just going to cancel this out because I've, I've already got them in mine. Uh, yes, cancel all of that. Um, now, one thing that I should note, whoops, uh-oh, shouldn't have done that. Let me delete these. So, I, because I already have everything on my computer, I didn't want to overwrite them there. I could, it wouldn't hurt anything. Um, one thing that I will note about this is um, you can either just copy all of these files and put them in this user objects directory, or you can put them inside of a subdirectory. So, to keep this directory a little tidier, if you have if you have lots of plugins installed, you might want to throw them into a subdirectory. So if notice I've got all mine inside of my Passbus Tools LBT to PH uh, subfolder, and inside that subfolder I've got all of these um, Grasshopper user uh, objects. So there's a whole bunch of Grasshopper user objects over here, and you can just copy those into a subfolder if you want. So that's perfectly fine as well. So one way or another, though, you want to get all of these um, custom GH user files that we downloaded into your Grasshopper scene. So hopefully that is pretty straightforward. Um, you can just install just like you would any other Grasshopper um, Grasshopper uh, uh, plugin. Now the only piece that is a little bit unique here is that we need to put these script files someplace. So we need to put the script files someplace, and those are going to go in your Rhino dialog as well. So um, here we scroll down a little bit. You'll see we need to move these, and these are these are code library files, and we need to move them into our Rhino scripts folder. So again, I don't know where you um, installed your um, your Rhino. Um, but um, we want to we want to move all of these into our uh, Rhino scripts folder, so we can find that pretty easily. I'll come over here and open up our a new window. Let me make a new one. 
Okay, so I've got a so I've got a new finder here. Just looking at my folders. I'm in my C drive. Go to C drive. Go to the users directory, and in the users directory, go to the username where you've installed Rhino, and go to app data. Again, app data might be hidden, so you might need to unhide that. And in app data, you go to roaming, and we go to McNeil, and we go to Rhinoceros, and we go to Seven. I know it's a long sort of chain to get there. Um, but once we're there, notice here that in Rhino, we have a scripts directory. And so what you want to do, it's very straightforward. You want to come in here and you want to go to the downloaded scripts. So we downloaded this file called scripts. And inside there, we've got this LBT to PH. And all you need to do is just copy that from here over into your scripts directory in Rhino. So all you need to do is just grab this and drag it over into this folder there. Right. So you're just going to copy those over. What's inside of there? Well, there's just a bunch of Python files inside of there. There's just a bunch of libraries here um, that uh, expose some functionality and things to your grasshopper scene. So once all of that is completed inside of grasshopper, uh, you should have a new toolbar here in your PH toolbar, and you should have a whole bunch of new tools here, which are going to allow you access to all of the new um, ladybug tools to PHPP conversion uh, functions. So there's a whole bunch of new functionality and tools here that are uh, now ready to use. So uh, a couple different things that we need to do, obviously, in order to make all that work, but just get all those files into the right place. Just follow the instructions here. It should be relatively straightforward, I hope. Um, there's one last piece that we should probably talk about, which is in order for the Ladybug Tools to PHPP converter to work, uh, you're going to need to have Excel um, uh, installed on your computer, and you also are going to need to locate the main Excel library file, the main Excel library file, which is, which is named Microsoft Office interop excel.dll. I guess it's not the main Excel library. It's the main, we call it the interop library. It allows us to talk to Excel. So uh, when, we're, when, we're, when we're streaming our data from Grasshopper out to Excel, we need a language to talk to Excel. And so this file is going to give us the language to talk to Excel. This allows us to connect to Excel from outside. So you need to find this computer, this file on your computer someplace. Um, it, when you install Excel, it, it'll you should uh, have access to that. I was able to find it on my computer here in C Windows Assembly GAC Microsoft Offer uh, Interop uh, version 15. Big ugly name. Da da da. Um, but if you just do a you know file search for that um, for that file, you should be able to find it pretty pretty easily. And what you want to do is you just want to copy that file into that scripts directory. So the same directory that we just put all those new scripts that we just downloaded, just make a copy of that DLL there. And that's, again, just going to expose that Excel language to Grasshopper. Um, it's going to give it a language to, to sort of um, uh, speak to Excel properly. So you will need to do that. Just find wherever that is on your computer and just make a copy of that into, your, into this Rhino folder wherever you installed Rhino. So a uh, fair number of pieces there to, to set up, but again, just work through the, if you just work through the, um, you know, instructions here and follow, follow along with these steps, it should be relatively straightforward. You shouldn't, I hope, have too much difficulty um, um, making any of that work. Now, uh, just the very last thing, let me go back. Um, to the GitHub page there. Uh, just the very last thing here before we close. Again, if so, so you'll always be able to get the sort of um, you know most recent version of those tools there from the Passfast Tools website. But again, if you do want to um, use the most current version, the development version of all the tools will of course always be available here on the GitHub page. And if you just take a look at this LBT to PH uh, website here. You'll see that there's a whole bunch of um, different folders that sort of mimics the same structure that we were just looking at um, uh, recently. You got your all your Grasshopper user components, um, got all your Rhino plugins, got all the scripts files. Um, then there's some other stuff here as well. Uh, but again, these versions will always be the development version. So these will be the sort of newest version that we're sort of currently working on. Um, whereas from this Passwise Tools website, you'll always be able to download the sort of um, official release versions, I guess, as it were. Um, so hopefully hopefully that makes sense. You can feel free to use whatever version you want. Um, I guess the only caveat there would be that the development versions are sometimes, you know, sometimes these are a little bit messy. Um, you know, once in a while you'll get bugs and errors and things like that um, uh, there for sure. 
So uh, hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully that gets you up and running um, relatively uh, smoothly. If you do have any questions, feel free to um, uh, send, send us an email. Uh, you can always get in touch with us here at the, um, where's the, I guess we don't have a, the email there. Well, I, I, should, I don't know why. We should add the email there. Uh, but you can always get in touch with us here at phtools at buildingtype.com. So feel free to drop us a line there. I'll add that email to the GitHub. I don't know why that wasn't there. So in any event, um, hopefully this was helpful. And um, I uh, look forward to seeing you back in the next series of videos. Um, uh, yeah. All right. Thanks, everyone.